exciting video for you today. I've been looking forward to this one for a while. Arturia is a company that I do a lot of videos for. They don't pay me to make the videos, but they do send me software and hardware for free. So this is another one of those situations. They sent me the Poly Brute. Ben Jordan said this is his favorite synth, and I would have to agree with him. I am in love with this synth, and I've only had it for a few days. So what I want to do today is show you the connection that you can have between the synthesizer and software. And that is probably my favorite feature is not only can you make these beautiful sounds on it, but it's extremely simple to use with a program like Machine or Cubase or Ableton Live or whatever. Show you a workflow that would work for any program where you can take multiple patches, work with them in a song-like scenario, record the output of your first idea, jump over to another track, jump back to that first track and keep working on it or add another section. And that can be kind of difficult with analog synthesizers or with hardware synthesizers. But with the software, it is so seamless. You just jump to a new track, the settings get sent to the synthesizer, you keep working on it, you make some changes, you bounce that back to audio onto your audio track, and then you jump over to another track and keep working with the same device. So it's really easy to quickly build up an idea of a song with multiple tracks on a device that isn't multi-timbral. So you can only have one patch on here at a time. But that's not entirely true because one of the beautiful things about this device is you can actually have two patches on every patch or you can have two layers. So just like you would have something like in a contact play instrument, you'd have layer A and layer B. We have the same thing on this device. So you can actually have two patches loaded up at any one point and morph between them with this morph A and B control right over here. Yes, they did send me the hardware for free, but they don't have control over what I say in the video but they don't need to because I'm just going to gush the whole time, you know? So let's have a look at some of my favorite features of the device. That'll take a little while. I'll put some chapter markers in and then we'll jump into the software and try playing with this with machine in a musical way and build up an idea kind of on the spot and look at some of the patches and, uh, and just have some fun with it. And by the way, this shirt that I'm wearing here, J3PO, make sure you go check out his channel. I'll put a link in the description. I'm just a huge fan of everything he does. He makes incredible YouTube videos and has incredible music that you can go stream right now. So make sure you go check out his stuff. I picked this shirt up off his website. He's got some merch on there and some really great patches for software synths, but also for hardware synths. So make sure you go show him some love. And uh, now let's get into the device. So when you first look at this device, obviously one of the main things you're gonna notice is beautiful wood. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I kind of have a thing for these wood cases and wood aesthetic in my studio, you could say. And just so you know, I always put links in the description for these cases for my machine. Everybody asks. Anyways, this device looks like it was made for my studio. The knobs feel great. The things like the tuning knob have a perfect little notch when you get up to the 12 o'clock position. The big controller knobs like these ones right here feel fantastic. The, the quality of the plastic, everything just feels good. One thing I would say about the glowing LEDs is Sometimes it makes it hard for me to read the text. So I'm almost wondering if I need to get a light because usually my studio is pretty dark. Right now I've got it lit up with my studio lights. So I'd love to be able to take the LEDs and just dim them a little bit. And I don't think that's a setting on the device. But other than that, just beautiful device. I love the Morphe controller and the touch strip, the ribbon here. The Morphe looks very similar to the Touche controller. Another French company that I love dearly, Expressive E. But this device is different. With the Expressive E one, you have side to side and front to back, and the controls always return back to zero. With this device here, you can move your finger up, say to the top corner. You can have it so that your, your setting stays there. Watch what happens if I move my finger up, the dot right here stays in the middle. And then when I pick it up, stays up at the top and so on. A very different control than you would get with the Expressive E one. I think it would work great with this device as well. You can go check out my Moog video where I do exactly that. I use this device with the software and get control with the Touche over the Moog synthesizer. Very easy to do that with this as well. So first off, looking at the device, you've got all of the usual suspects like the VCOs, the voltage controlled oscillators. And so these are analog oscillators and the filters are analog. Everything's analog until you get to the effects section. Then we've got things like FM synthesis between these two oscillators, 
we've got a noise section, the mixer to control the levels, and you can see how you can route the audio into two different filters. So we've got a Steiner filter up top and a ladder filter down below. And these two different filters are gonna change the sound, have different characteristics to them. And then we have the envelope section. I have a really great video on synthesizer basics, which I'll put a link to in the description. Make sure you go check that out because I talk about oscillators, I talk about filters, I talk about envelopes, I talk about LFOs, all of the main features of an analog synthesizer. So you've got the regular filter envelope here to change how the filter opens or closes over time. And then we have the LFOs, which can be applied from this modulation matrix right here, which looks kind of intimidating, not near as intimidating as the matrix brute. Click on the mods mode right there. Then you go and look at it, you think, okay, if this is connected to up here, this, this I can figure out. Okay, we got a bunch of things already assigned on numbers one through eight and a bunch that are empty. So right now, number one, this first row is assigned to pitch. And I can use any one of these changes here to modulate pitch. So I can modulate pitch with velocity. If I just click that right there and crank it up 12 semitones or a bunch of semitones. Now, if I play soft, harder, and you can hear the pitch changing. Okay, I don't know when I'd ever want to do that. I could click on after touch and crank that up and see what happens. Pretty cool. Suffice it to say that this whole section right here, very easy to work with. And once you get your brain around a few of these little settings, it's super intuitive how to change every other control on this device and how to dig into the deep settings for each control as well. So over on the right hand side, we've got the effects section. We've got modulation like chorus, phaser. And then if you hit alternate, you've got a whole bunch of alternate presets in there like flangers, ring modulators, bit crushers. There's this new ensemble that just came out in the recent firmware. And then over here, we've got the reverb and the delay section with different types of delay, different types of reverb, and just beautiful sounds in there as well. Next, we've got this motion recorder, which I'll talk about in a little bit, and the sequencer, which I'll also talk about in a little bit. And then over on the left-hand side, you'll see this morph section, which is this morph between two different patches, which I'll talk about in a second as well. Accessing the patches on the device is really easy. You go to presets and you can bank through them right here, eight rows across and then all the way down. So there's F and then the number. So I could go to patch one F5 right there. Let's try another patch. Or you can just cycle through them right here. So let's just look at how this ribbon works and how easy it is to assign it to a control. So if I go over to my modulation settings right here, click on the mods button, and then I go to a ribbon, you'll see that one through eight, these rows are all assigned to a control. So right now, each one of these things can be modulated with this little matrix. So I can take, say, LFO1 and assign it to the pitch of VCO1 right here. So I just click right there and choose a value and then now, now we can hear that LFO is affecting voice one. And right now I've got it set to 12 semitones. So that's messing with pitch and then I just get rid of it, click it again to get rid of it. If there's something that you want to control, like say I'm not worried about ladder cutoff, but I want to use the whole cutoff of everything. And I want to assign that to something. All I have to do is hold slot eight right here. And then I touch this control and you see that it changes to master cutoff now. And then now I can assign master cutoff to LFO one. So I go down here to LFO one under number eight. And then now this amount, crank it up. This LFO is now going to be controlling the master cutoff. <laughs> So very easy to assign modulation to pretty much any parameter and very intuitive. If you need more pages, all you have to do is jump to the next one and we've got four up to four different pages 
of modulation assignments that we can make on this device. So it's like very easy to dig in and, and figure out these different settings. But let's go look at the ribbon. That's what we're here for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the pitch of VC01. This is a two voice patch. So in other words, there's two voices happening at the same time. So let's assign pitch of VC01 to the ribbon and we'll make it 12 semitones. And then this one on voice two, I'm going to assign that to the ribbon, but I'm going to assign it to negative 12. So as one goes up, the other one's going down. So there we go. Now watch what happens when I touch the ribbon. And right now the ribbon is, is set to a different setting than I don't want. So I just hit settings and touch the ribbon. And now we can see the ribbon modes. And I just want this to go to tap. So what happens now is as I tap it, oh man, with this ribbon, you can also go and choose to say, okay, let's go uh, scan. And so you'll see if I scan up, it goes back goes back to where I started from. And if you do slow scan, it'll return back slowly. You can also have it hold so that when you play, I let off, it stays there. And it just stays there. Now I need to return it back to zero if I want that. So another really neat feature of this synthesizer is this record arm button or the motion record. And what it allows you to do is just make any change that you want. It will record that change. And then every time you play it a note, it will do that little change. So it's like, it's kind of like an instant uh, automation of some parameter or modulation of some parameter. So I hit record arm and then I'm going to change the FM amount between these two oscillators and it's going to have a interesting little sound to it. And as long as record arm is on, now watch that when I play it. And then I turn record arm off. And then now I hit play and we're going to set it to once and watch what happens when I play. You hear that sound. But let's just quickly talk about the effects section on this device because I think that's probably what makes this thing sound so beautiful and magical as you're going through the patches. It's like you can put reverb and delay on there. And of course, normally with a hardware synthesizer, you'd have to have some external effects unit, but the effects built into this are stunning. Let's put on some reverb. And then we've got different types of reverb. We've got hall, plate, and then alternate is where you're going to get a bunch of other types. If I go to alternate, now we can see a bunch of options that show up on the display. We've got bright plate, a room, dreamy, which is really neat. And then spring reverb, and then also a delayed plate, which allows you to hear your, your sound first and then have the reverb kick in. Anyways, beautiful little patch. Let's go to the sequencer and go to the sequencer mode over here. And if I hit record, then I can just drop in a whole bunch of notes. And then we're going to play that back. We can give them accents by pushing this little button right here. So you can see the row of the notes that I played and you can even hear them if you're in that record mode. And then I can just get rid of them by clicking them. And then I can also add some glide or some portamento up to those notes. So have a listen to this. Turn the glide up. I play in the middle C, we're hearing the notes in D. If I play down a semitone, we hear it now in C sharp. 
one thing I would love to see on this device is first off the ability for me to confine it to a key so I could play say in only D minor. Anyways, not possible yet, but I was really racking my brain trying to figure out how I could achieve this kind of thing. And I think I've come up with something and that is with little snapshots. You can save snapshots on this device. So I could save a snapshot and then make some changes to it. And then all I have to do is go settings and save and I'll see my snapshots and I could switch between those two different snapshots and have different patterns. So there is a way for us to actually have multiple patterns. Actually, I think there's only up to five. So it'd be neat to see more than that in this device. Anyways, we'll get into the sequencer stuff in another video. And then the arpeggiator is related to the, to the sequencer in a lot of ways. <laughs> the regular app arpeggiator stuff apply in this device you know the ways you can have the the notes cycle through up and down or just up or just down or random and stuff like that but they've really taken it steps further and made the arpeggiator extremely powerful with things like adding accents and slides and then taking an arpeggiated thing that you've just created and copying it over to the sequencer so it can now become part of your sequencer like it seems like they thought of everything with this device and I'm just, I'm still having a hard time comprehending how much time it took to make this synthesizer and the amount of people that were making it. I have no idea, but it is an incredibly powerful device. Now I want to get into the software because the software is my favorite part of this device. That's not entirely true. The sound of this device is my favorite part. So let's look at the software and see what it's all about. I am going to be using this in machine. And with this one, I made a little idea and we're going to make something new in real time. So So there's a little idea using all patches just from the Polybrute sampled into machine. And let's go over exactly how easy that is. So maybe what I'll do here is start with just the kit because I've got this fun little kit, which I'll use and uh, we'll, we'll start out fresh with everything else. So this, this little drum kit that I'm using, by the way, is from ADSR Sounds and I am finally an affiliate with them. So if you want to help me out, you can click on the link for uh, their stuff. And if you buy anything, I'll get a portion. This lo-fi cuts little sample library is what I'm using for the drums. And I've been using ADSR stuff for years. If you haven't checked them out, really great resource for, for sounds. But let's start with that little pattern that I've got for the drums. Really fun little crunchy lo-fi sounds that I've got going on, but let's find some patches now to play along with this. We're going to leave the hardware for a little bit and head over to the software. And that's where this gets really exciting. I'm going to go over to a new track or new group. And on the first slot here, I'm going to put Arturia and we're going to go to Polybrute Connect. And we have to hit connect and it will change whatever's on this device and be now controlling it by the software. So I hit connect. Now, if I go up to the patch up top, right away, I'm controlling the patches through the software. So this is Polybrute Connect right here. I'm going to make this even bigger, which I love about their software. Arturia is just one of my favorite designers of the interfaces of software. And this blew me away when I opened this up for the first time and saw how close this looks to so many of their other virtual instruments. I was like, this is beautiful. I've used other hardware controller software and nothing comes close to how easy this works, how beautiful it is. Wait till we get into the patch browser and you'll see why I'm so excited. I am just all about patch browsers. That's my thing. I love Omnisphere. I love the Arturia instruments for their patch browsers. I like complete control for the patch browser. If we go over to this software right here and just click on this little library, you can see that we can get into a beautiful patch librarian for this device. And it works like that, like it's so fast. And please make this kind of software for the Microfreak. Can you imagine if we had this beautiful interface for that device and had the ability to use it with the software? I'd probably buy five of them and have them all working at the same time because you could route you know, a song to a whole bunch of them at the same time. It'd be beautiful. So please, Arturia, make that for the Microfreak. We really need that. And if I go over to this browser, I can filter things by pads. I can go, let's look for a whole bunch of funky patches. And then maybe let's go to bass. 
And so now we can see the patches on here that are funky with bass. Nice. We can control it. We can control it with any keyboard. And then, of course, I can control it with the machine as well. You can't see it from the camera, but the machine already has some parameters uh, lined up. Let's start with some keys, get some kind of progression in there. So I'm going to go over to keys and we're going to keep it on funky just for a second and see what kind of patches we get. Another one of my favorite things is just clicking on a patch and then arrowing down to the next one. And it's really fast for an analog synthesizer. Try this patch out and see what happens if we morph it. Oh, I like that too. We're going to go over to machine. I'm going to go to chord mode and we're going to just cheat a little bit. We're going to go to a chord set and we'll go to, let's go to, um, let's try one of the major ones. I haven't done that for a while. And let's set it to D major. patch let's now print this and because normally what you do is I'd, you, either you'd come up with a next section but I usually like working one chunk at a time and so I've got a nice little idea going but what I need to do is print this to tape or I need to bounce it to audio the way we're going to do that is we're going to sample internally in machine so right now this audio is going into my audio interface I just need to set my machine sound my sound slot to here to receive sound from the inputs of my audio interface. So I go over to the audio recording input here and I can see that the input's coming into inputs three left and right, which is actually five and six on my audio interface. What I want to do is I want to let it, this, this last chord in this little section sort of trail on for a little bit longer. So right now my pattern is four bars long. That's great, but I don't want it to repeat back to the beginning. I want to make this one six bars long, so it's just one little extra step to, to give me the tail end of this, this last chord if I need it. So, got it set to six bars. Next thing we need to do is make sure we are on sound two because we want to record the notes of this audio onto the second sound slot. So I'm going to click on sound slot two. I'm going to click sampling or sampling on the hardware. And here I want to set to record the inputs of three and four, which is where the sound is coming into my audio interface. So now I can hit start and it's going to start recording. So now I've got a nice recording. It fades out nicely. It is a sampler right now. And I just want to use this as an audio module because I just want it to play back every time I play the song. So I hit on the plugin button or I look up here on the sound menu and I change that to internal audio. So now when I press play, even with the synthesizer off, there's our sound. And all I need to do with my pattern is make sure that my pattern is four bars long, because otherwise I have, I've got this little extra chunk, which I don't need right now. I might need it in the future, but now I've got four bars that's just going to keep repeating. Next thing I want to do is make sure I turn off sound slot one, because that's got MIDI information that's going to the Polybrute. And we now want to switch to an entirely different track, an entirely different sound. 
so that we can come back to this later on, but we don't want that many information sending to the new patch that we choose. And that's probably what it's going to do. So we want to make sure we turn, disable that, turn it off, and we'll re-enable it later if we want to make any changes and record some new track. So now I go to my second group and I'm going to find a base patch. Load up the Polybrick Connect VST right here. We can do this from the hardware as well. Double click on it and it says this instance needs to be connected to the hardware because right now it's still on Ginza Chime for that last preset. And the beautiful thing about this is you don't need to save anything. You can make all sorts of changes and switch to a new track, start messing with that, and then decide, you know what, I played the wrong chords or something. You could go back to your other track. It will send the information when you connect it and all of your presets, everything you've done to change the patch just pops up with it right there. That's what makes this so beautiful. And right now it says Ginza Chime, so it's connected to it. But let's go change the sound. Let's go to, um, let's try a bass patch out. So let's go to the browser and let's find some good bass patches. So I'm going to go over to bass and then we're just going to go to funky and then we'll try out some of these patches. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty fun actually. Now, of course, we can go in and edit our MIDI information. We can quantize it, do all of that good stuff that we like doing with, uh, with MIDI editing. Of course, we don't have to print any of this without working on it and, and tweaking it, fine tuning it. When I'm ready to record this or print it to track, I can make all sorts of real time changes if I want. So let's give that a try. So I'm going to set a new sound slot, go to the sampling menu. Same thing as hitting sampling over there. Oh, before I do it, of course, let's set the pattern to six bars and go back over to the sampling menu, hit start. It's coming in from the same spot and I hit play. And I press stop. And there we've got our, our base information with a little bit of changes in it. And of course, you could go and do that as many times as you want until you got your tweaking just right. And then if I want to, I could go back and make some changes on the Ginza keys. So let's have a look at that. I click on this track again, and I'm going to re-engage Sound Slot 1, which has my virtual instrument on it. I'm going to go look at the plugin, double click on it, and it says we need to connect. So if I hit connect, now I can go back to my chords. <laughs> So now, of course, we can go in and play something entirely different using that exact same Ginza chime sound that we had from our first track, and nothing's changed on it. So even though we were using the synthesizer for something totally different, it's gone back to everything that we need for that first track. We're ready to make something new or make a new section of the song or something like that. I can't be the only one who's super excited about this. So let me know in the comments what you think about these, these features because it, it's really blowing my mind. Let's add one more track just for fun. Maybe I'll add some kind of synth lead in there and then we'll call this video done. Let's go with something kind of ambient. Let's just take the, uh, let's just go to the modulation here and take the pitch and assign that to the ribbon, which it already is, but let's just see how many semitones it's on. Let's take it up 12 semitones. I just am so impressed with the connection between the software and the hardware and working with it in your music making program of choice, how easy that's going to be and to take hardware and give it the same functionality as a virtual instrument and to have this tactile control and to be able to create such incredibly beautiful sounds out of an analog synthesizer, make this whole thing just such an incredible package. And uh, thank you so much, Arturia, for sending this over to me. I'll be making more videos on this in the future. And then of course, videos on everything else. So if you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell. And thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.